What the fuck is up? Welcome back. My name is Noah Hills. You can find me on Twitter at Noah More Parties. And I'm back with another uh, prize picks video. Not Thursday night football, Saturday day, night, afternoon football. It's wild card weekend. We have the Niners and the Seahawks, and we have the Jags and the Chargers. On the Saturday slate, I have one 5x5 five five and another set of five. I don't, I don't know. Honorable mentions, I guess. Ten total prop bets here. Let's get into it. The first line I like as part of the 5x5 uh, five five here is Riley Patterson, the Jaguars kicker. 6.5 kicking points. I like the over. He's averaging 7.4 per game this season, including 9.1 per game since the Jags' bye week in Week 11. And he's been over 6.5 points, so over this line, in six of his seven games since then. The Chargers are fairly close to league average as far as points given up to kickers. Um, they give up like 7.3 points per game. They have been better recently, giving up only 4.2 points per game in the last five weeks, but that includes three games against bottom five offenses in the Rams, the Colts, and the Titans. The Jags uh, move the ball a little bit better than those teams do, and Patterson has been hitting a lot of kicks recently, so I like him to go over six and a half points against the Chargers. The next line I like is George Kittle, 3.5 receptions. I like the over. He's averaging four per game this season, and he has five straight games, including every Brock Purdy start, with at least four receptions. The Seahawks are slightly below average against opposing tight ends. George Kittle is really good. He's been clicking with Brock Purdy and been productive lately. I like him to catch at least four passes. The next line I like is Christian McCaffrey, 0.5 rushing touchdowns. I like the over. He's averaging exactly that per game with the 49ers, 0.5, so you know, half a touchdown, one touchdown every two games with the 49ers. But he's got four in the last five weeks. That's just rushing touchdowns. I actually think he's gone six weeks in a row with a touchdown, period. But in the last five weeks, he has four rushing touchdowns. The only game in that stretch where he didn't score a touchdown was last week when he only played like 48% of the snaps. He didn't even play the whole game. So Seattle is bottom 10 in rushing yards and rushing touchdowns given up to running backs, meaning like they're one of the worst 10 teams in the league. The, the Niners should be able to run on these guys. Christian McCaffrey's good. He's been scoring touchdowns lately. I like him to score against the Seahawks. The next line I like is Brock Purdy, 6.5 rushing yards. I like the under. This, this is really a bizarre line to me. He's averaging 0 0.3. 0 0.3 rushing yards per game this season. He doesn't have a single game above this line. He has never rushed for seven or more yards in an NFL game. He only has one game with more than three rushing yards. Only three of his 22 rushing attempts this season have gone for more than two yards. And the 49ers are 10-point favorites. We might, like, even if he runs for a few yards, there's a decent chance we get a couple kneel downs to pad the under on this. So I like Brock Purdy to rush for less than six and a half yards against the Seahawks. The last line I like as part of, the, as part of this 5-by-5 uh, five five is Keenan Allen, six and a half receptions. I like the over. He's averaging just over this this season, 6.6 .6 per game. 7.5 since returning from uh, injury in week 11. And he only has one game below this in his last five games. Mike Williams, like Brandon Staley was an idiot last week. Mike Williams is questionable, might not play. This looks like a, you know, it's setting up for like a vintage Keenan Allen 14 targets type of game. I think he can get seven or more receptions. So that's the five by five. Uh, Riley Patterson over kicking points. Kittle over receptions. McCaffrey over rushing touchdowns. Brock Purdy under rushing yards, Keenan Allen over on receptions. Here are five honorable mentions. The first one is Joshua Kelly, 5.5 receiving yards. He's averaging 7.8 per game this season. I like the over. And even since returning from injury in week 12, he was hurt there for a while, 6.4 receiving yards per game. Uh, so obviously he's not been super productive in the receiving department. That's Austin Eckler's job. But he has hit this line in four out of his last five games. And the Jaguars allow the second most receptions, receiving yards to running backs. All we need is one dump off, one screen. Eckler needs a breather for one drive. Herbert will is very willing to check it down. Maybe Mike Williams isn't like there. All we need is, is Josh Kelly to catch one little dump off pass for at least six yards. He's been doing that recently. I like him to do it again against a team that isn't great 
against running backs in the passing game. The next line I like is Brock Purdy, 28.5 pass attempts. I like the under. He's averaging 26.8 per game this season, so 28 and a half, 29 or more passing attempts would be more than his season average, but he's hit that line in just two out of his six games, and Seattle is weak against the run, and San Francisco is favored by 10. Like, I don't know why they wouldn't just run the ball, and then eventually they'll be ahead. Like, this doesn't, it just doesn't seem like a pass-heavy game script. I don't see why Brock Purdy would attempt more passes than he typically does. The next line I like is Elijah Mitchell, 36 and a half rushing yards. I like the over on this one as well. He's averaging 59 and a half rushing yards per game since Christian McCaffrey joined the team. He had 55 while playing 16% of the snaps in his first game back from injury last week. Seattle, again, is a run funnel defense. Average at best against the pass, terrible against the run. 27th in the league in rushing yards allowed to running backs. If this is a multi-score game like Vegas, like Vegas predicts, the 49ers as of this recording at least, are favored by 10 points in this game. If it's a multi-score game like that, San Francisco is going to be killing clock at some point. They probably don't want to be doing that with Christian McCaffrey on the field. Elijah Mitchell is well-suited to come in in the fourth quarter and just eat up clock, and he's probably going to play a little bit, sprinkle him in, you know, sprinkle him in throughout the game anyway. I like him to get at least 37 rushing yards. The next line I like is Geno Smith rushing yards, 15.5. I like the over. He's averaging 21 and a half rushing yards per game this season. He's hit this line in 11 of 17 games, including each of his last five and nine of his last 10. Seems like a strangely low line as far as, as I'm concerned. He generally gets, you know, well above this. I think he can do it. And the last line I like, this last honorable mention is Travis Etienne, 75.5 rushing yards. I like the over. He's averaging less than this per season, 66.2 per game, but 77.8 in the last month. He's got a couple hundred yard games in there, including three of his last four games with at least 83 yards. And the Chargers are an even worse run funnel defense than the Seahawks are. They're seventh in the league against the pass, 31st, second worst against the run. Travis Etienne is explosive. He could do this in one run. I mean, that's not likely, but it's possible. But the Chargers just have not been great against the run this season. Etienne could break a couple... I would imagine he can get uh, 76 rushing yards. So there it is. A recap of the honorable mentions. Joshua Kelly, receiving yards, over. Brock Purdy, over pass, or excuse me. Brock Purdy, under pass attempts. Elijah Mitchell, over rushing yards. Geno Smith, over rushing yards. Travis Etienne, over rushing yards. Have a beautiful weekend. See you next week. Peace. (laughs) 